Hey there, greetings everyone. Daniel Lowry here with another cool YouTube video, hopefully to help you out if you're into that cybersecurity stuff as we are, and that's probably why you're here, right? And today we're gonna to take a look at what's uh, a, a nice resource for you if you're into home labs and things of that nature, you wanna kinda of get some hands-on experience with learning how to hack and then having something to hack, this should help you out with that. And sure, there's the try hack means of the world, there's the hack the boxes, the meta CTFs, the Pico CTFs, and all that stuff, and they're all great resources, but here's just another thing that you could possibly want to use and could be very helpful, especially if you're looking at web application security. You want to do some web app pen testing, some web app hacking. This could be really uh, helpful for you. As, as in, it, not just that, but definitely that as well. All right, and this is going to be called Websploit Labs, and you can find this at websploit.org. And this is a fairly simple thing to get running and installed, but is a phenomenal resource if you're looking to do some of that labbing, have some targets in which you can mess around with, maybe do write-ups over or anything like that. So we see that uh, Websploit is a learning environment created by Omar Santos for different cybersecurity, ethical hacking, bug hunting, incident response, digital forensics, threat hunting, training sessions. Websploit, Websploit Labs includes several intentionally vulnerable applications running in Docker containers on top of Kali Linux or Parrot OS. I am running the most current version of Kali Linux. As you can see, I think this is 25, 2025 something. I forget exactly, uh, but it, as of the filming of this, it's the most current one. It's something C, I, I think it's 2C or something. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Ultimately, you need to be running Kali or Parent because that's where this is meant to be run. This is Websploit Labs has been used by many colleagues and universities in different countries. It comes with 500 distinct exercises. That's a lot, right? Imagine having 500 different things which you control, you have access to at any given day or night. It doesn't cost you a dime. That could be a super cool thing. So that's why I'm pointing this out. I'm a huge fan of this. I've been using Websploit since 2018 and they've continued to grow and refine and make this better. So just kind of want to give them a shout out, A, and B, give you an excellent resource to help you be able to do that labbing. All right. So let's get to it. I want to deploy now. Now, if you've already run this in the past, you hit upgrade, but if you're new, which is why you're probably watching this, you're going to hit that deploy now or deploy. And it takes us here basically and tells us what to do. Download Kali and Parrot, your preference, and install those distributions in a virtual machine. Use the hypervisor of your choice, VirtualBox, VMware, Workstation, Fusion, EXI, ESSI, um, KVM, Proxmox, doesn't matter. There are minimum requirements. Eight gigabytes of RAM, two CPUs, at least 50 gigabytes on the hard drive. Right, I think I'm running eight gigabytes of RAM. I have, uh, I think I'm running four CPUs and I'm running 80 gigabytes of hard drive. So yeah, that's that's the, probably the one big caveat. Oh man, it takes a little bit of resources, but you know, if you can overcome that obstacle, if that's not a big deal, if you already have those resources available for you to create these virtual systems, um, then yeah, this is gonna be a good time. If not, it still may run, but it may not run awesome, right? So just keep that in mind. Your, your mileage may vary, as they say. All right, so that was step one. I've already done that, so you can do that and then come back to the video. Step two, run the Websploit install script. After you have installed Kali Linux, run the following command from a terminal window and set up your environment, and there it is right there. Curl SSL, bing, bang, boom. Hit that, right? So I'm just going to copy pasta this into a terminal. So I'm going to copy, go here. I'm going to open a terminal. We'll do this. Make this of a human readable size. And then shift control V. And that's all it takes. Fire off. Obviously, it's going to ask you for a password. And then there it goes. It is updating, installing. Obviously, it's going to need access to the internet so that it can download the resources that it needs to be able to do the things that you want it to do, which is spin up Websploit. And of course, this could take, uh, you know, your mileage may vary again on how long this takes to get installed. So maybe I halted there, but you know what? I'm gonna let it cook. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here and just kind of take a look and see what else we're gonna do, kind of look into the future here. 
It says, this command will install all the tools, Docker, intentionally vulnerable containers, and numerous security resources. A note, Websploit Labs is not supported in Apple M1, M2, so M-series Macs due to compatibility issues with hypervisors and Docker. You can verify the install SH script because there is a SHA-512 checksum. So if you want to make sure what you're downloading is exactly what it should be, you got the SHA right there. All right, something about Docker service. Docker is not configured at, at to start at boot time. To avoid this for vulnerable applications to be exposed by default. This is that's why it's done. Uh, the Docker service and automatic to start the I'm losing my mind. <laughs> to start the Docker service and automatically start the containers, you can do service Docker start. To obtain the status of each Docker to container, do Docker or sudo Docker ps. So if you're Vaguely familiar with Docker, that should be old hat for you. If you're new to Docker, then that is very helpful command right there. Let me tell you what. And this is really cool because these are the vulnerable applications. So let's take a look at what they're giving us. So we've got some beginner to intermediate level. So WebGoat, very cool. That's awesome. Uh, Juice Shop is in there. DVWA, Multilidae 2, uh, DVNA, Hackazon, which is fun, right? And then we have some intermediate to advanced level. Hackme.artov, I don't know that one. Mayhem, Safe Mode, Galactic Archives, Yascon, fun. Uh, Secret Core Branch One, Gravemind, DC3001, DC3002, and Y Wing. And down here we can see that DC. 3101, DC 3102, and DC 3103. I'm wondering if that means domain controllers. Are we going to get the ability to work with Windows domain controllers? I don't know. Honestly, it's been a while since I messed with this, and I was like, you know what I need to do? I install this. I want to play around because I bet they've updated. They absolutely have since last I've messed with it. So this ought to be fun. Let's go check our install. Looks like we are... Enumerating objects, counting objects, compressing. So it is, it's doing its thing. And let's go back. So while it's still still cooking, I do want to look some of these up while we are busy with this, right? Waiting for the install. Let's see. Ones that I did not I did not see that I knew. DVNA. What is DVNA? Dang vulnerable or damn vulnerable, right? The DV DVNA. Vulnerable, uh, vulnerable app. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. No JS application. That's what it stands for. Ah, that's cool. So basically, this is what they've done. They found all these cool vulnerable things. So this is a No JS app. It a simple No JS application to demonstrate the OWASP top ten vulnerabilities and guide on fixing and avoiding these vulnerabilities. Very cool. The fixes branch will contain fixes for the vulns. Fixes for the vulns, OWASPs, top 10 2020, 2017 vulnerabilities, and fixes their developer security guidebook. So that'd be cool. I, I mean, I'm that would be a great resource for someone that wants to not just know what those OWASP top 10 vulns are and what they look like, how to exploit them, but also how to fix them. That is gold because then you can start adding that skill set to your resume to say, hey, I not only know what these vulnerabilities are, but I also know why they're there and what you can do to help mitigate that. Keep it maybe even from happening in the future. That's cool. I like that. Let's take a look at another one. Um, what looks good here? Mayhem or Hack Me Artov. Let's go look at Hack Me Artov. Hack Me dash RTOV. No, I did not mean that. I want this. There we go. I think this probably is it. The following is a collection of vulnerable servers. Let's see if we find this in here. <clears throat> I'm not seeing it. Let me control F for R T O V. There we go. Vulnerable container. Oh, it takes you straight to our web split. So this must be one of their own. Cool. Okay. I just wish I could have had more information about it. 
Let's see, what else can we do? Let's go back to this, back to here. Oh, I guess, guess I'm going back here. How about mayhem? Mayhem, purposefully vulnerable. Yeah, just do that. I probably spilled that wrong, but that's okay. Automated code and API security testing. Cool. Is this a, this is, it looks like a security tool, but does it have its own? Is that what's going on here? Is there, there's docs and tutorials, blog, press, products. I don't know if this is exactly what we're looking for. That's a security tool. Mayhem security. Man. I, it's, it's it can be tough to find these, so I'm so glad that Websploit has done the heavy lifting for us to find these and make them a part of the Websploit framework here. Uh, let's look at some others. Galactic Archives. Let's look at that one. Maybe we'll have a little more luck. Let me click that and then do Galactic Ar Galactic Lactic Archives. Okay, Websploit Labs, oh, they have a PDF, cool. Let's take a look at that. Hacking web apps and APIs with Websploit Labs. Here's the lab guide, excellent. About the CA, so if you're installing, this is great, I'll have to drop this. I didn't realize they had this. Man, I love learning with you guys, right? This is it's what the show is all about, it's why I, I, this is what my YouTube channel is all about. Not only your learning, but my learning as well. So this could be a very useful resource. I'm not going to, this could be, it will, I guarantee it will be. This is going to be great. Okay. Well, I'll make sure to drop that in the, sh um, the description of this video. But there you go. Got a lot. Let's check the installation. Oh, it looks like we're done. Sweetness, all done. All tools, apps, and containers have been installed and set up. Have fun hacking. Cool. So if I do an IP-BR-CA, oh yeah, look, there's all the there's all the actual um, uh, Docker containers. Looks like they all got IPv6 addresses though. So hopefully we can get some IPv4 addresses. I can take a look at. Uh, let's do netstat. Dash A. Yeah, kicking. Does it tell me where it is connected, though? It used to have a list of IP addresses. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised. IP dash uh, BR dash C. Let's just do IP adder. So, so far, it's all in IPv6 but I feel like, I feel like it will give you IPv4 addresses. Let me look at that output again, IP-BR-CA, because there were some like 771. So 10.7.7 and 10.6.6 .6 seems to be where we're cooking. So let's do an nmap scan. Nmap of do an sn dash uh yeah I'll do dash t five just to make it go super fast, and then we'll just do one ten dot six dot six dot o slash probably twenty four. Let's see what happens. There we go. Okay. It looks like yeah, there's plenty of machines that are up. Six dot twelve, six dot thirteen, fourteen. So I don't know why they're not showing up in my IP uh, output yet, but let's take a look at seven. Seven dot seven. So I'm basically just doing a ping sweep to check for live hosts. And here we have one, two, and three. So I'm guessing this is the DC stuff, right? We saw DC 31 had just a few options, right? Like down here, where was it? Yeah. Looks like they're, oh, there's the IPv4 addresses. Boo. <laughs> Daniel losing his mind. Danny, don't you love to watch me just be crazy as I'll get out? But there we go. 
I'm, I'm trying to work around a problem I don't even have. <laughs> but there you go. So now we know the IP addresses that are associated with each one of these different devices. So if I wanted to mess with Juice Shop, it's 10.6.6.12. I should be able to open up 10.6.6.12. Fire it off. It is unable to connect. So that makes me think it's like on a specific port. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Juice Shop runs on port 3000. Let's see if that's... No, it's not 3000. Okay, well, let's do some little more. Reconnaissance, where to go? So let's do nmap dash s. Oh, we'll do just t5 dash n. Uh, n dash pn dash p dash. That the way we'll scan every open port. And we'll give it 10.6.6. What was it, 12? Was that what it was? Or was it 13? I have 12, but was that correct? Yeah, 12 is juice shop. All right, let's fire it off. Let's see what we get. Yeah, port 3000 is open. So why is it not going there? Why did this give me a problem opening? Oh, it's not HTTPS, bro. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> Stinking browsers with their forced HTTPS. That will get you every single time. There we go. There's Juice Shop, right? And this is all running. I don't have to do anything uh, other than just spin up Websploit. And now I can start playing around with Juice Shop. I can go, oh, this looks fun. Yeah, me want this or whatever. And, you know, oh, what's an account? Let's go log in. Hey, can I do uh, or one equals one this business? Oh, look, I was successfully able to log in and solve a challenge, right? So very, very cool. I can look at like, what was one of the things that we were looking at over here that we didn't know? Um, Mayhem looked fun, 106618. Let's try that one. Let's go 106618, fire it up. Defcon Red Team Village Mayhem Challenge, episode one, an intentionally vulnerable application with tons of cool exercises created by Omar Santos. Omar. You are a veritable cornucopia of amazing resources. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, look, a web form. No validation. Vulnerabilities are everywhere. Hack me, right? Oh, this looks awesome. Cannot wait to dig my heels into this stuff. Very, very cool. Well, there you go. Websploit 2018. Not 2018. That's when I started. That's what I used to know it as. Websploit 2018. Now it's just good old Websploit. Go to websploit.org, download this, put it in a virtual machine. You got tons of resources. I mean, so many to choose from. Over 500 different vulnerabilities, or at least, you know, they might not be different. Like I have multiple SQL injections, but it's not the same place. You got to find them. You got to exploit them. You got to figure it out. And that's really cool. And to be able to do that all from your own desktop, your own workstation, Man, how is this a bad plan? And you could learn a whole lot from it. Maybe you could kind of reverse engineer Websploit and run only the individual things that you want instead of all of them at one time, reducing your need for uh, a larger amount of resources in your host for your virtual machine. Very, very cool. So there's your homework, kids. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you got some value out of this episode, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Share with your friends. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Till next time, everyone. Keep hacking.